My name is Raccoon. It rhymes with doom, and you'll be hurting all too soon. Rock, paper, scissors! Rock, paper, scissors! Rock, paper, scissors! Rock, paper, scissors! Krillin, this may be a stupid question, but what are they doing? Acting like a bunch of goofballs, I'd say. Hey guys, this is Poohhead189, and today we're going to be discussing the Ginyu Force. I know this is a video that a lot of you have been waiting on because they are a fan favorite, and it's pretty easy to see why. They're super silly and super strong. I am also making this video instead of my usual race video, just like how I made the Frieza Force video instead of that, but I will get back to the various races and species soon. So, let's get into it. Introduced in Chapter 272 of the original manga, the Ginyu Force are a band of mercenaries that work alongside Frieza's military, called the Frieza Force, and Ginyu and his squad are highly respected by and intensely loyal to Frieza. They answer to him directly and can even disagree or at least discuss things with Frieza without fear of decimation. Oddly enough, despite their familiarity with each other, Frieza is still surprised and weirded out by their flamboyant nature. When Toriyama was developing them, his main inspiration for their creation was that his young son at the time was into Sentai, or Super Sentai. And let me read the description of this genre from the Kenzenshu site. Sentai, or Super Sentai, refers to a genre of Japanese children's television programs that feature teams of costume superheroes battling monsters. These shows are produced by Toei, owner of Toei Animation, the animation studio responsible for Dragon Ball, Dragon Ball Z, and Dragon Ball GT. Footage from Japanese Sentai shows were edited, dubbed, and combined with new footage of American actors to create the Power Rangers. Sentai shows typically feature teams of five costumed heroes, each one a different color, who fight using elaborate poses that originated in Kabuki Theater. The connection to the Ginyu Special Squad should be rather obvious. The Great Saiyaman also shows a strong Sentai influence. And this would certainly explain the Ginyu Force's showy nature and multicolored theme. Now, in the anime filler, when a few of the Ginyu Force members had died, Captain Ginyu was looking for recruits, and was judging various members of the Frieza Force based on their ability to perform and dance rather than their strength. And that, coupled with a few of the specials in video games like Dokken, with the Ginyu Force special training, would indicate that they put style first and foremost and focus on strength later with training. However, we know that that cannot be true, as in the manga, Captain Ginyu does confirm that they are all mutants, born with exceptional powers and strength, and so the flair and the dancing is likely a team-building exercise and a brand, and it's the dancing and theatrics that they train for, not the strength. Now, the Ginyu Force is generally only called by Frieza for special assignments or emergencies. If Frieza has a problem he can't simply obliterate or have his minions handle, he calls in the Ginyu. And as we all likely know, their members are Raccoon, Jace, Birder, Guldo, and Captain Ginyu himself. Now, aside from the Captain himself, we never get specifically told the power levels of any of them. However, we can make some good educated guesses. When Gohan and Krillin powered up when facing Guldo, Jay says their power levels are over 10,000, and the Daizenshu 7 says Gohan has a power level of 14,000, and Krillin has one at 13,000. Considering Guldo needed to use his time freeze immediately and rely on it, while Raccoon states that that is rare, we can guess he has a power level around or above what I surmised Nappa's power level was in my Saiyan video, which is around 7,000, 7,500. So Guldo should have that on the low end, or up to 10,000 on the higher end. Now Raccoon, Jace, and Birder likely have the same power levels, and in many of the video games, they're stated to be about 40,000. And I do need to mention that in the anime, King Kai says that their power levels, or the Ginyu Force's power levels, are five times that of Goku's on Earth. And since Goku's power level was a little bit above 8,000, then 40,000 would be in the same ballpark, of course. And while video games and the anime aren't technically canon, I actually think that's the best bet for their powers. It's stronger than Vegeta's 30,000 plus, and powerful enough to be far superior to almost anyone else in the galaxy, while still being weak enough for a being of a power of 60,000 to beat them, like Captain Ginyu surmises. Now on to Captain Ginyu himself. We know from the manga that he can raise his battle power, and his maximum strength is a whopping 120,000, which means he is the strongest being in the universe behind the Cold family to his and their knowledge. And in fact, he's even stronger than Goku when Goku meets him, if Goku did not have the Kaioken technique. Though 120,000 is not his regular power, 
is just his maximum, and he might not be able to use that power constantly. And since he felt like Goku, who he thought had a power level of 60,000, would be a challenge to him regularly, it's safe to assume his resting power is around 60 to 70,000, likely. And, as is the case with mutants, the members of the Ginyu Force seem to have special powers or properties. Guldo has his time control, obviously, where he can freeze time by holding his breath, as well as a few psychic abilities in his disposal. And Ginyu has his body-changing power, and we'll talk more about that in a second. And of course, Birder is known for his great speed. Even if his speed isn't a match for Frieza's, it does stand to reason that Birder is far faster than anyone of his power level has any right to be. But if that's the case, then one has to wonder what Raccoon and Jace's powers are, if they have any. There's been a lot of fan speculation that if Birder's is speed, then Raccoon's is endurance and Jace's is key manipulation. Though, of course, those are just fan theories. Raccoon's being endurance because of the beatings he took, and Jace with his special attacks like the Crusher Ball. But of course, like I just said, those are just theories. Now back to Ginyu. A lot of people wonder if Captain Ginyu's purple, horned body is his original one. I would say, while there is a possibility of it not being his original body, I would lean toward yes, it is the original. For one, he would likely have to be a mutant to even have that strange power, and it would be very convenient if he stole the body of another mutant. Secondly, he has the rare skill to raise his battle power, something that usually only happens if someone is extremely familiar with their form. And of course, when Ginyu was going to change bodies with Goku, it took Jace a moment to remember he even had that ability, and since everyone who knew Captain Ginyu was familiar with him in that form, it's likely he's had it for a very long time. But of course, none of this means it can't be a stolen body, just that I don't hold that opinion personally. People also wonder if Ginyu could steal Frieza's body, and to that I say, potentially, though Ginyu would have only one chance to find out, and if he failed, he would be dead. Plus, he is loyal to Frieza, and he lives a life he loves already. There would be no reason to rebel for more power other than his own ego. As for the team itself, the Ginyu Force also seem to have a great amount of camaraderie together, and though they are hardened mercenaries, when one dies, they do realize they miss them when they think or attempt to do their standard stances, because the flow is now messed up. They love playing games, sharing snacks, and betting with one another. It's very likely that they have worked together for quite some time, and the characters themselves have fairly unique designs, particularly Birder, Guldo, and Ginyu. Jace's color is quite rare, and I do recall hearing a theory that he and Zarbon are of the same race, though Zarbon's mutation would be his transformation, whereas Jace's mutation would be something different. But of course, the only reason people likely speculate that was because both are fairly statuesque, very human-looking, multicolored aliens. Now, other than his great size, Raccoon seems to look almost identical to a human or a Saiyan, but we also see other human-looking aliens in the series. And considering how he fights two Earthlings and two Saiyans, and never mentions he is either, we know he is not one. Though since he looks human, his design has been used a few times after Toriyama created him. Most notably with Android 16, as both are large men with orange hair at the center of their heads and big square jaws, and we also cannot forget the henchman Bongo from Curse of the Blood Rubies, who has a near-identical build and face to Raccoon, though his head is always covered so we never see his hair. It's also the same with Bandages the Mummy as well. In fact, since Bandages the Mummy was created first, one might say that Raccoon took Bandages' design. But either way. I would also be remiss not to mention the filler where the Ginyu Force is sent to King Kai's planet to test the strength of Tien, Yamcha, and Chaozu. While that is just for the anime, Akira Toriyama did help with the art for that episode, so in my mind that does give it some limited credibility, and it would be a good way to gauge certain character strengths. And finally, we also need to note that every member of the Ginyu Force was killed by Vegeta. Raccoon and Birder when they were unconscious, Jace in single combat, Guldo earlier in the fighting, and eventually Vegeta kills Ginyu in Dragon Ball Super. Okay everyone, that seems to be everything we know about the Ginyu Force. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you think my video deserves it, please like and comment, and I always appreciate your subscriptions. If you care to, I have a Patreon below that's just two and a half bucks, and I do have a goal of reaching 100 patrons by the end of the year, but no pressure of course. Alright everyone, have a great day, and I'll see you next time.